so let me give you a little analogy. Okay, so I was doing some reading this morning about ingredients. And this is all going to tie into the message, which is carrying over from um, the last two that I've done. Okay, so I'm in a different location. I'm doing a little bit of traveling. So I don't have everything that's necessary to keep this hair. And the reading is not about this hair, but the way I like it to be. Okay, it takes ingredients to do that. Generally, too, the right shampoo and the right curl uh cream because you know i have curly hair and this is what happens when i'm around water and it's moist in the air it goes poof right i didn't have my ingredients with me so this is what i'm dealing with so not that it really has anything to do with what you're looking at right now except for the fact that it's not the way i want it to be but here's the message synergy is the word that came to me yesterday when i was looking up about ingredients on how to fix your eyes okay how to fix your eyes and what i read in the article was that syn it takes synergy for something to work to your advantage so that means that it takes more than one ingredient or more than one concept or you know or more than one idea for you to get the ultimate results that you were looking for okay so synergy is a combination of two things or more that work uh, simultaneously in sync to give you the result that you're looking for. So um, this is, these are the little words that I got this morning. Okay. Um, synergy to, okay. I just said about that. So get your heart number one and your mind number two into sync daily, and it will improve your life for the better. Okay, so there's your two ingredients, your mind and your heart need to be working in sync synergetically to give you the ultimate result that you're looking for. Okay, there's no one single solution to having an optimum life. There's no one single solution. We're here to learn lessons. We're here to see, you know, uh, how other people handle things. And, and in that respect, it makes us react in certain ways. And have we got a handle on that? Or do we flip out all the time? Do we trigger all the time? Do we, you know, handle with compassion? Do we come back kindly and jokingly, you know, with attitude? What is our problem when, you know, that we need to fix internally for us when something externally from somebody else annoys us? Okay. Okay. Um, or we see something that doesn't sit well with us. We don't like what's going on in the world. We don't like the crime. We don't like corruption. We don't like darkness. We don't like evil. We don't like any of those things. So how do you react? That's a lesson for us. Okay. Um, so there is no one single solution, says God, to, to your problem. It will be a combination that is right and what works for you. So what do you need to fix is the question that came through today. Um, is it your attitude? Uh, what do you need to fix? Is it your attitude? Is it understanding? Uh, understanding, sorry. But they just dropped in their solutions. Is it understanding solutions? Okay, faith. And the big one that they said that we're all here to work on is our willingness to change. Because we get into the mindset where we think it's all about what we believe in. And sometimes we don't look at the other side, okay? Uh, many people do their research, many people, you know, in any situation, not just about the corruption that's going on around the world. Many people will, uh, are researchers and they're fact checkers and they, you know, they do their digging. You know, I have one friend and I love her so much, but every time I say, hey, did you hear this? She's right on to Google right away. And I know it, I feel her energy going there and I laugh because I know what she's doing to check it out, right? Um, but uh, and I lost my train of thought with that because now I'm, I'm thinking of that. But um, so your willingness to change. Are you willing to change? Are you willing to trust? Are you willing to have faith in what other people say? Or does your human nature, your animal instinct drive you to search for yourself? Does it drive you to hunt around and prowl for the solution that you're looking for? Like a cougar, you know, um, and wild cats, they, they hunt at night, they look for their prey, you know, which is not what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say they hunt for what they want. So they get out there, regardless of what anything else tells them, it's a natural instinct, they know they need to eat to survive. So we know we need certain things in our life to survive, like good curl cream for the hair, right? Um, so that it doesn't do this frizzy thing, it goes into nice coils, like it's supposed to, right? You have to, um, 
you have to do your, your digging and you have to search and you need to get the ingredients that work best for you to solve your problem. And, you know, this could go on and on and on, but I told you that my messages are going to be shorter. But I mean, what are the things that you need to work on? I've been doing these messages from the collective since 2015 or 14 or 13, somewhere in there. I think it was 15. Okay. So there's only so many things they can help you with. But as I evolve, okay, I hear differently. And, um, you know, sometimes we shift our timelines and, you know, newer information comes forward for us that I can gain because I'm changing myself, I hear differently, they give me more, they trust me with more, you know, that I can share with you guys. So um, it's a process when you're trying to work through things, you might be working through a problem that you've had since you were a kid, with your brother, you know, and, and you're still in your life with your, that brother every once in a while, and that little trigger comes up, well, you got to think at some point, you know, that was in the past. And do I need to keep hanging on to that? Because it's affecting my future right? It's affecting my future. So you've got to look for the ingredients to solve and resolve your problems. Okay. And the things that are keeping you down in a lower frequency. Now I've got to tell you, since I've been up here, the visions that I've had are crazy. Okay. Um, as we were driving closer to the location, we were getting closer to big bodies of water. And water is a conductor of energy for um, spirits and um, a connection to our higher realms, right? So as I was driving, or I wasn't driving, my husband was driving, I was closing my eyes and just focusing on what was coming through. And I could see the star beings. They're saying, hey, we're going to be there. And hey, we're going to be there. And they were showing themselves to me. And I was just like, wow, that's crazy, right? Like, it's crazy how clear it is as you get out of the smog of the Wi-Fi and the dirty energy that you live in in a city, right? That is a complete, um, what's the word? Interference. Because we're energy. So if you're bombarded with energy from Wi-Fi and towers and 5G and all that, it's going to interfere with our frequency, with our higher frequency that's trying to get through. And this is part of the problem that's going on now for people not being able to connect to their team or connect to God or the angels or, or whatever they're wanting to connect to. A part of it is, the, is that. It's the frequency, okay, from the Wi-Fi and uh, internet and all that. Cell phones. There's towers everywhere, right? Um, so as I was getting closer, they were showing themselves to me and, um, I did see Arcturians. I was like, really, like really kind of, uh, thinking that was cool. I haven't seen them for a while. They came through in healing sessions before, but, um, to see them stand there and say, we will be there. You know, it was very cool. Mind you, I haven't seen them yet since I've been here, but, um, you know, it is what it is. So the most, the coolest thing that I had happened to me while I was here doing some meditation was um, Jesus, actually. I've seen him a few times, but the one day I was just sitting outside of my place here and the sun was on me and I just thought, I'm just going to see what happens and who comes through. Well, would you know, it was like this. Okay, so the coolest thing that I saw, I am going to start that again because the phone rang, was, was of Jesus. And as I was sitting outside, um, what he was showing me was like, this. So my, I'm looking through my third eye and this would happen. A sheet would come up like this and there would be a scene on the sheet. Okay. So I would see him sitting with his robes, like the, the white robes sitting with tons of people around him, listening to his words that he was speaking or talking about to the people. And um, whether you believe anything about Jesus, he did speak to people while he was on this earth. That was his mission to bring people back to their heart. Right. So he was showing me this in the first scene. I thought, wow, that looks like Jesus talking to a bunch of people. And then the paper went down and another one came up and he was in a different location and he was sitting up on a rock and there was people all around him. And I could, see, it wasn't like a photograph. I could see the scene. So the people were moving. Okay. Which threw me off completely. And, uh, I couldn't hold the scene for very long, but he did this about six or seven times for me in while I was just sitting outside here with the sun on me. And it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen keeping it. And I could focus for about three seconds. That's about it. But it was so cool to see that. And I think it was just a reminder, like, Hey, um, you know, 
I was here on the earth. People need to understand I was here on the earth, whether they, uh, you know, I shouldn't say this is the message he was giving me, but this is what I'm getting. People need to understand he was on the earth. You did walk the earth. Okay. There's been uh, tons of evidence about that. Um, and he was a good man and he, he preached a good word and he wanted to bring everybody to their heart, you know, and that's what many of us do or are, are preaching ourselves here or talking about ourselves, regardless of what, uh, what organization or what, um, concept you're focusing on the majority of people out there now are talking about let's get back to our heart let's get back to love you know we're fighting the, the corruption and everything but let's get back to a place where humanity can reside together peacefully and and follow and oh i'm getting goosebumps here so this is a bit the message humanity needs to get back together on a humane level is what they're telling me um, and be respectful and loving towards each other. It, it doesn't mean you have to get along with everybody or you have to automatically hang out with certain people. It just means you have to learn a level of respect, regardless of their path that they're walking, regardless of um, the ingredients that they're bringing into their life to make them how they are, to make things work for them, right? We just need to respect who everybody is. Um, that's part of our life or has been part of our life and allow them to make their choices and go the way they want to go. You know, um, I don't think our Lord ever stopped anybody from doing something that uh, when he was out there helping the masses, you know, if people turned away from the message, then they turned away from the message. Right. And we do have free will and we have um, the right to make up our own minds. And uh, yeah, you know, it, that's a little off topic, I guess, but I guess I needed to share that about the uh, the visions. And um, it was very cool. It was really, really cool. I'll tell you what was also very cool was going out last night, my husband and I, when it cleared, because it's been rainy, to look at the stars. The stars here are just magical. Like there's no haze in the way. There's no, you know, uh, no interference, no light. It's actually really dark here at nighttime, which is why if you have eye problems and you can't see in the dark that's why I started looking up stuff last night about healing the eyes okay but anyway the stars were beautiful and they were so bright and Robert caught us caught a uh falling star and I missed it but I did see when I leaned back on my car and I was looking up and I was focused on one star and it started zigzagging like this and it was going um, like in around. I'm like, is that a satellite or what is that? Why is it moving when I'm looking at it? It was the coolest thing. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to share this quick message with you. I absolutely love doing my readings for people. And it brings me a lot of joy um, when I can do this on top of my job that I love so much. But this is Suzanne at the core. And this is who I am and why I'm here. And I love that I can do this. And it, it just makes everything else in my life so much better when I can be me and do this for you. So that's it. Me and my curly hair today are, I'm not even fighting it today. I'm not looking for ingredients. It is what it is, right? So I hope you all have a great day. And I'm going to talk to you soon. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel with my new little animated. Thank you, Abby for reminding me that that kind of thing needs to be uh, brought in to make videos a little more interesting. So I want you to have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye.